A launch took the royal travelers across the smooth blue lake of Udaipur. In this land of superb polo players, the Duke won a pony as the best player in an exhibition match in Lahore. Riding of another sort, the West Pakistan Rangers put on this tricky display. This was a proud moment for the camels. But it was a sad moment for these sheep offered to the Queen in the Khyber Pass. They were later slaughtered for a ceremonial feast. In Pakistan, they're very proud of their fine, sturdy livestock, and some of the finest were shown to the Queen in Lahore. In India, the cow is sacred and wanders about the streets unmolested. Even wildlife comes to the city streets, like the snake charmer's cobra. For the visitor after big game, there's plenty of variety. The Duke's first tiger, for instance, will make a splendid addition to the royal family album. But our choice of the most charming picture of the tour is at the Taj Mahal, although not, unfortunately, by moonlight. Here, the Queen and the Duke were fascinated by the pictures in the water. Another beautiful stretch of water is Lake Piccola, with its marble palaces built on islands. In sharp contrast is the rugged grandeur of the Khyber Pass, home of the warrior tribes who fought the British for half a century. Here the Queen was able to look up the Kabul River Valley to the frontier with Afghanistan. Another contrast, the famous gardens of Shalimar in Kashmir. They lie on the Dal Lake like the nearby city of Srinagar, which has earned the title of the Venice of the East. India has an architectural tradition dating back 5,000 years. Yet these ancient buildings blend surprisingly well with some of the modern additions to the skyline. There's been rapid industrial development in the 11 years since independence, like the huge steel mill at Dugapur. This vast plant was developed from a tiny village. And Pakistan has harnessed the waters of the Kabul River with the Vasak Dam, which will double the nation's electricity output. Pakistan also boasts the world's largest jute mill, the Adamji Works near Dhaka. Jute has always been an important product of this area, and today this is a major industrial center. The cloth that rolls off the looms of India and Pakistan adds up to one of the biggest textile industries in the world. It could have been Indian cotton, for instance, that the Queen wore on many of her engagements. Throughout the tour, she chose simple summer dresses, which emphasized that this was no great state occasion, but an informal meeting of old friends. Here, it was a gold lame dress, this was a dressing up occasion, a lady's reception in Karachi, and all the colorful finery of the traditional costumes was brought out. This must have been one function that the Queen particularly enjoyed. Could it lead to a new fashion trend in the Western world this summer? But it was upon the Queen that the eyes of the world were focused, through the reporters and cameramen who are inseparable from royalty. One cameraman you don't see here is the man who shot these pictures, Ronnie Reed, whose film of the royal tour has been seen in many countries. The Queen herself has taken a personal film of her tour, and the Duke has helped. Perhaps the most spectacular occasion of the whole trip was India's Republic Day Parade just a few days after the tour started. 
Two and a half million people line the Rajpat, the ceremonial King's Way, which is Delhi's equivalent to the Mall in London. And all the pageantry of the Indian Army was on parade. Troops are a special unit trained in mountain fighting by Sherpa Tensing, the man who climbed Everest with Hillary. In the second part of the parade, it was the ordinary folk in all their rich variety who had come from every corner of India to celebrate this great day. was an historic occasion, historic because of the presence of a reigning monarch at the Republic Day celebrations of a former dominion. India and Pakistan are now equal partners in the Commonwealth, and their friendship with Britain is still as firm as ever, strengthened too by the warm presence of the Queen and Prince Philip during the last five weeks.